Welcome back to History on a Hog. I'm Captain Boss. So picking up where we left off in part three, we saw a militia unit from the Mississippi Territory attack a Red Stick War Party at Burnt Corn Creek, and the militia unit got whipped and humiliated by the Native Americans. Remember, the militia unit had been mustered with orders to intercept and destroy this Red Stick War Party because the U.S. government had gotten intelligence reports that the Red Sticks were moving British muskets and ammunition out of Pensacola in Spanish Florida. The Spanish were assisting their European allies, the British, in supplying these war materials to the Red Sticks. It was part of the British plan to arm the Red Sticks and to use them to attack American frontier outposts and settlers in the area of present-day Alabama. This was part of the British strategic plan to open up another military front against the Americans in the South in the War of 1812. The British were using the Red Sticks to do their dirty work against the Americans in the Mississippi Territory. And they used them as shock troops in order to frighten the frontier settlers and creating havoc in the area. And it was working. The U.S. War Department was becoming increasingly concerned with the military activity in the South, where they knew the U.S. military was very weak. So they encouraged the Mississippi Territorial Militia to take aggressive actions against the Red Sticks. And they did. But after the attack by the Mississippi Territory Militia, the Red Sticks were now more motivated than ever to seek revenge. They saw all Americans in the South as the enemy, including women and children. And they would begin a campaign to hunt down all white frontier settlers and eradicate them. And they would show no mercy. The Burnt Corn Creek skirmish had lit a fuse. These attacks were brutal and vicious, but they would be nothing in comparison to what would happen next. On August 30th, 1813, one of the most heinous incidents of the entire War of 1812 took place, and the domino effect from this incident would set off a chain of events that would eventually lead to the American victory at New Orleans and the overall victory in the entire War of 1812. And this all happened because of the events that took place at Fort Mims, a small American frontier outpost on the Alabama River, just north of Mobile. I'm located at a place known as Fort Mims, and in 1813, this was the site of a horrific atrocity. A war party of around a thousand Creek Red Stick warriors attacked and massacred all the inhabitants of this small trading post and fort. There was only a handful of American soldiers defending the fort, but there were hundreds of local civilians, including women and children, taking shelter inside the fort from the Creeks who were on the warpath and killing white settlers indiscriminately. The Creeks completely overwhelmed the 100-man garrison of the Mississippi Territorial Volunteers who were defending the fort killing all of the military men within the first few minutes, 
including their commander, U.S. Army Major Daniel Beasley. And the killing frenzy did not stop there. Everyone taken refuge inside the fort were all either massacred or captured by the Creeks. Over 250 Americans were killed, women and children included. And the fort, fort was destroyed. The Fort Mims massacre has succeeded in spreading panic and dread throughout the southern U.S. frontier. In the weeks following the raid, several thousand people, about half the population of the Mississippi Territory, fled their settlements for Mobile, which, with a population of about 500, struggled to accommodate them. Once the word got out into the nation's newspapers about the massacre at Fort Mims, it resulted in a huge national outcry of anger by the American people, and they demanded and expected a substantial response by the U.S. government. But with what? The majority of U.S. Army regular troops were already engaged against the British and Canadian militia in the north, and many others were still defending the capital region in and around Baltimore, Maryland. Frankly, these were the priorities for U.S. troops by the War Department. There were no additional regular troops to spare for a response in the South. So, President Madison used a common practice of the time, call out state militias to do the job. He instructed the governors of Tennessee, Georgia, and the Mississippi Territory to deal with the Red Stick uprisings. In response, the governors of these states immediately mobilized their respective state militias and made preparations to move against the Upper Creek towns that had supported the Red Sticks' cause. One of those state militias had already been called out in the service by the U.S. government a year earlier, the 1,500-man Tennessee Volunteers. The Tennessee militia was made up of very fit and self-sufficient frontiersmen. Many were farmers, tradespeople, and riverboat handlers. All were crack shots with the American long-rifled musket. Hunting for food was a way of life for them out there in the Tennessee wilderness. And they loved their moonshine. To a man, they all either made or procured their own local holler version of the very potent spirit. It was said it gave them incredible courage, liquid courage. And although there would be shortages of food and ammunition for the Tennessee militia units during the war, there was never a shortage of moonshine. It really was the glue that held these militia units together. And when the call came from the Tennessee governor to muster, they came in mass. And it was this overwhelming patriotic response that would give Tennessee its state motto, the Volunteers. At this time, the Tennessee militia was under the command of a sometime lawyer, sometime farmer, a part-time state representative, and a full-time hellraiser. His name was Militia Major General Andrew Jackson. Learn what happens to Andrew Jackson when you return for part five. Find out the fascinating story of the trouble he gets himself into even before he gets started. And see what he and the Tennessee Volunteers do to the Red Sticks in retaliation for the Fort Mims Massacre. Next time on History on a Hawk.
I hope you've been enjoying this series. Please hit like or subscribe so you can keep up with new episodes and future series. And please, share this channel with your friends. Find out more about me and this site at my newly published History on a Hog website on the World Wide Web at historyonahog.com. Thanks for watching.